And now let's move on to the OPITO session and maybe please call up on stage Director of OPITO, Christine Curry, and Director of OPITO as well, Hewan Hay. You go, sir. Thank you. And the first presentation will be from Christine. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Christine Curry. I'm, as Vico just introduced me, I am a director of the PITO. Um, I work primarily within the skills and policy environment, and today I'm going to talk about learning in a digital age and how and why requirements and capabilities are changing. Ryan very astutely highlighted within his presentation that millennials have different expectations than we've seen in previous generations. Traditional ways of learning, training, and working with the access that we have to technology these days will no longer suffice. Throughout the course of the next 15 minutes or so, we'll be looking at some questions around how to make a career in the oil and gas industry more attractive to the current and future workforce. I'll also try to provide some inspiration as to how you can today start considering new ways of thinking, working, adapting and training in order to support the next generation of learner. I'd like to kick off with some scene setting and I want to start with a short video which was created by Skills Development Scotland, the National Skills Agency of Scotland. You will see that it refers to Scotland, but I think once you've seen the footage, <laughs> you will agree that the content has global relevance. It captures the significance of disruptive change that has happened and continues to happen all over the world within the workplace, across all sectors and industries, and why transformation in the learning and training space is absolutely vital. There was a line within that video content, keep learning in a world that never stops changing. We are learning all of the time. How many of you have picked up new skills by randomly scrolling through your Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook feeds? I'm not necessarily talking about something that's complicated, but maybe a new recipe idea, an iPhone tip or trick. 
How many of you have gone to YouTube to understand why something isn't working, for example, or to access a slow-mo, perhaps, in order to perfect a golf swing, um, or to get that data in Microsoft Excel or Word to work in the way that you want when it just won't? Learning these days happens pervasively throughout our everyday existence, and this is now what people have come to expect. If you think the learning behavior I've just described using social media is reflective of adaptation within our generation, this is all the current ge generation know. This is how they have behaved from the get-go, and rarely would they consider resorting to reading an instruction manual. The days of rigidity in terms of classroom-based learning are outdated and have been proven to be less effective than formats of learning expected in a digital age, where it's online, available from anywhere with an internet connection or content that is downloadable. If you consider that learners in the oil and gas industry often work in environments where there's no Wi-Fi or mobile signal, but many of them do have access to digital devices that they can carry with learning material and provide support until they're once again connected to the net. The workforce will increasingly expect this level of flexibility and not moving to digital will provide a more unattractive offer to the next generation. Learning in a digital age is blended, whereby the student interacts with content through the integration of both online and face-to-face -face environments. It's 24-7, readily available whenever the learner requires it. It's personalized, or as Ryan put it, individualized, tailored to meet the individual needs of the learner. It's visual, as I'm hopefully demonstrating today, the use of video can be a very powerful and engaging tool. It's interactive and it's collaborative, where learners often work together to achieve an objective or an outcome. For those who are in work or looking to learn new skills, they are looking for new ways of learning. But in order to drive these for fresh forms of learning techniques, delivery also needs to be modernized. New skills, platforms, and assessment approaches will be required. 58 million global learners have already accessed what we know as a MOOC, a massive open online course, an interactive step-by-step -step program aimed at reaching an unlimited number of participants worldwide to create a community of lifelong learners. I wonder if any of you have engaged with a MOOC relative to oil and gas. They are out there and readily available to access. These platforms that you can see behind me on the slide are just some of the most popular and well-known. It's also about developing capabilities within your organization to deliver online learning. This could be through a virtual learning environment, um, or as we know it, a VLE. Perhaps through one like Blackboard, that's a well-established enterprise solution, or by using Canvas, a newer platform delivering well to mobile devices. Some organizations might prefer, prefer to go down the open source route using Moodle or Sakai, for example. These platforms deliver learning and assessment in a flexible and on-demand way. Innovations in learning technology gives companies the, capa the capability to engage people in continuous learning throughout their longer and more varied careers. These technologies are poles apart from traditional learning systems and they leverage well-used and loved aspects of consumer technology such as the media platforms I mentioned previously. They make sure that learning is simple, social, and spontaneous, available anytime, anywhere. The critical role of constant and continuous learning has never been more important than it is today. Learning is increasingly less likely to be an activity which takes place away from the workplace, outside of work time, and with dedicated protected hours not because it's less valuable than it used to be, but because the world around us is changing so rapidly and radically that to keep up with change, we must be in a constant state of knowledge progression. Technological innovation and our engagement with it will drive the future potential of the oil and gas industry, but we need to ensure that we are creating an attractive and supportive learning environment for the next generation of the workforce and the workforce that we have in place today. Digitalization and operational practice 
must be reflected in the approaches we take to the learning environment and we are increasingly feeling the pressure in oil and gas to fend off competition from other industries which are proving to have their finger, dare I say it, more closely on the pulse of technological advancements. Some key challenges relative to the oil and gas industry and some current questions that we need to be asking include some of the following. The purpose of the video I just showed you was twofold. First, I wanted to point out that it was made using artificial intelligence and it makes use of open source images and content, all of which were for free. It demonstrates that the free tools are available and shows that we don't need to rely on PowerPoint culture anymore as the predominant means of engaging in learning. The creation of the video took less than 10 minutes, perhaps quicker than it might have been to create a slide deck. The particular tool I used, Lumen5, which is on the, the screen behind me here, is a video creation platform with the goal to allow anyone without training or experience to easily create engaging video content within minutes. The tool offers a built-in media library containing millions of copyright-free photos, videos, and audio tracks, and it even suggests images that will suit the tone and mood of what you plan to present, or if you prefer, you can upload your, your own images to put with the content. Your video can then be moved straight to YouTube once it's been created, showcasing again that the future of learning is open and sharing. Another great example of a free and open source learning material authoring tool is H5P. It allows users to add multiple choice and fill in blank questions, pop up text, drag and drop and other types of interactions to their videos, presentations and quizzes using only a web browser, no software required. These are only a couple of examples of the free resources available, but I hope they help to provide a flavour of what is out there to support interactive learning that is quick and easy to use. It also demonstrates innovative ways that you can bring in-house presentations up to date. The other point I wanted to make from that video content is that change is happening very much within our industry. It's unavoidable if we want to remain competitive in business. As Ryan put it, uh, this is how we've always done it mindset is a slippery slope to irrelevance. While technology continues to infiltrate every corner and facet of operational practice, we need to ensure that the journey is mirrored in our learning environments. Apito is also on the journey to change and adapt and consider what its customers now and in the future want and need. My colleague Ewan Hay will very shortly be giving a very real example of the strides we've taken, but in parting, I wanted to highlight that Apito is working towards modeling and leading behaviors around delivery and standards, increasingly working online and collaboratively, supporting centers to help change their delivery methods, harvesting and showing you the way to resources that you can use, helping to change culture and leading research to identify future skills requirements. In fact, Apito, in partnership with the Robert Gordon University's Oil and Gas Institute, 
has just embarked upon a new high-level workforce analysis for the oil and gas industry operating in the UK CS. The study aims to review the skills requirements over the next 20 years, taking into account production changes over time, the influence of key activities, and the high-level impact associated with the application of new technology. The analysis will help to provide additional insight to help the sector to understand labour markets, which will help to ensure that the skills shortages and skills gaps are minimised in our industry over the course of the next 15 to 20 years, thus maintaining industry productivity. The study specifically aims to deliver mapping and characterisation of the current workforce, scenarios for future workforce requirements, and an assessment of the impact of innovation and new technologies that are entering our workforce. While the initial phase relates to the UKCS, aspects of the work have already been tested for feasibility within other continents, and the model being utilised for the study is transferable to review other regions around the world. Through this work, we hope to ensure that our industry remains an attractive place to work and continues to be a first choice for the workforce now and the workforce to come. A recent study by Manpower Group found that 93% of working millennials identify ongoing skills development as important to their future careers, and increasingly so when compared to more mature generations. It's an exciting time. There's a world of opportunity out there to engage with innovative learning, resources, approaches, and content. Make sure you're not left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christine. And now our next speaker is Ewan Hay, Director of Opito. Thanks, Christine. Hello, my name is Ewan Hay, and I'm a director at Apito with the responsibility for the development and review of Apito standards. And on behalf of Apito, I'm proud to be standing here today to officially announce that after 12 months of collaboration with industry stakeholders, we can now officially begin training the workforce via the online delivery of the Bosiet suite of standards. We think this is a great example of industry stakeholders, employers, delivery partners, APITO staff and the workforce working together to achieve a result which has clear benefits to employers and the workforce. And I'm delighted to be able to share this information with so many of you in attendance today. But before we begin, here's a taster of what it looks like. Welcome to APITO, the basic offshore safety induction and emergency training, or BOSIET, is a basic level induction course for new entrants to the offshore oil and gas industry. PITO produces world-class industry-driven standards that are recognized globally. Behavioral safety system tools are tried and tested before being introduced on offshore installations. So how do we get to this point? The timeline depicted on screen demonstrates a tremendous amount of work that's been done over the last 12 months and how so many stakeholders have worked together to achieve the key milestones. In the latter part of 2016, industry stakeholders and employers were consulted to establish their requirements and expectations, leading to an approved project scope and plan. The first half of 2017 was spent working with Atlas Knowledge on the design and development of the product, including the development of scripts, storyboarding of the training, filming and graphics production. During this period, 20 PITO approved training providers came on board as global training provider champions to provide feedback and verification on the content. Latterly, an extensive pilot to test and validate the online learning and the subsequent training centre practical requirements was undertaken by workers and training companies in Australia, Kazakhstan, 
the UK and the US taking us successfully to where we are today. A great effort by all involved, I'm sure you'll agree. Whilst we share some screenshots, let me talk you through some of the details. Five days on location trip filming was undertaken in the UK, which included four days at AIS training and one day at Bristol Helicopters. The course and portal build was completed in 1,115 hours and includes 107 videos, 200 graphics, 212 pages of content, 40,000 words drafted for on-screen text, and 60,000 words recorded by a voiceover artist. The products available for tablet, mobile, and PC. Clear screen layout, simple instructions allow users to log in and learn at their own pace, whenever and wherever they have access to the internet. The digital delivery provides an easy access, flexible way to undertake the knowledge learning outcomes of the Bosiet training prior to attending an APITO approved training provider to undertake and complete the practical learning outcomes. The digital delivery platform is not intended to replace the traditional three day Bosiet training, which will still exist in its current form. It's intended to offer choice by providing an alternative delivery method, which allows employers and the workforce to learn and train in a way that suits them. Nothing has changed to the content. It's still the same Bosnian standard, including the same learning outcomes and information, ensuring that workers continue to be trained to industry agreed and internationally recognized standards. It still includes the same four modules that we're familiar with. The safety induction, helicopter underwater emergency training, with variations for Bosiet, tropical Bosiet, and Bosiet with compressed air breathing systems, sea survival, and firefighting. The program can be viewed in portrait or landscape form to suit the device used and the individual learner preference. The platform is designed so that learners can complete the modules in any order they choose. Their progress is saved allowing them to stop and resume any of the modules whenever they choose and undertake the training in time blocks which suit their busy lifestyles. The use of film footage, graphics, animation, voiceover and text provides learners with a varied and interactive way to learn and helps prepare them for the practical training which follows. One of the key benefits of the digital learning is in relation to the time saved. The bar on the left denotes the time taken to deliver the four Bosiet modules in the traditional way, approximately 18 hours, or in effect, three days of training. The central bar denotes the time taken to deliver the same content by combining the digital learning with the subsequent practical training carried out at a training center approximately 12 and a half hours in total. And the third bar denotes the typical time required for the delegate to complete the digital delivery element of the training of just over six hours. So in summary, theory learning can be undertaken 24 hours a day, seven days a week in any place with internet connection. The four modules can be completed in any order and in a way that suits the needs of the learner. The platform is available on all devices, desktop, laptop, tablet, and smartphone. The use of video footage and animation helps to prepare the learner for the subsequent practical training and assessment. Knowledge checks and adaptive learning technologies ensure that the candidate has been able to demonstrate all of the knowledge learning outcomes. And the final assessment and issue of certificates remains with the APITO approved training center. So in summary, what are the key benefits? It's easy to access. Online learning is available to learners anytime and anywhere in the world where they can access the internet. It's flexible for learners who can complete the program at their own pace, in their own time, before progressing to an APITO approved training center for formal assessment. Reduction in time. Only one day away from home or work. 
for formal assessment. Reduction in cost, reduced travel and accommodation expenses for employers, and training providers can become leaders in the digital delivery of internationally recognized industry standards. Before I conclude, on behalf of APITO, I'd like to formally thank the 20 participating training providers for their contribution either by supporting the project as champions or by participating in the learner pilots. Our sincere thanks to you all. And finally, this is your chance to become a leader in the digital delivery of these industry standards, helping your workforce to stay safe in a more flexible way and increase efficiencies throughout your business. For employers, the standards are available on our, work, our website now and information is available on approved training providers around the world. And for training providers, please contact your regional approvals coordinator for further information. And finally, thank you all for your time. I very much appreciate it, and I hope you all have a thoroughly enjoyable day. Thanks. <laughs>